Let's get started off. Yeah. Thank you. Can you just defend the, the lens? Huh? The lens. Bring it in. Wow. Bring it in. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't take any, any of the credit. Um, God gave us this vision a couple of years ago. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys a true story. Um, we were actually, I was talking to um, my, my entire team, which is like com composed, composed of a couple of people, Bear Tag, um, Gospel Music Buzz, Indigo Inspire. And we all were talking about me going on tour this summer. And I was I was actually, they actually told me, we're going to wait. Let us roll the tour out. Let's give us nine months to roll it out for next year. So we were, in, we were on a Zoom call, and they were like, well, what else are you going to do with Stella's? I'm like, well, I thought about a celebrity basketball game. Everybody got quiet. <laughs> they said, let's do it. And that, that was in March. So we wow. just pulled this off, and now we're excited to get 12 months to do it next year. Like, yeah, you know, we, yeah, we yeah. just pulled this off, so... That, that right there emotionally just does it for me. And we also want to make sure we touch the mental health awareness. Like that, that was yeah. the very important yeah. part, especially for our community. Yeah. One more quick question, my man in the back right here. Well, you know, I was born and raised in the church. Mm -hmm. And um, my mother, my father, musicians, choir director. And a friend of mine, um, Wanye, the introduced me to Cool in the Gang Son. And actually, Wanye and I had like a, a battle at the, at the flagpole in high school. And uh, it was my high school he transferred to. So, of course, I won. But they were talking Wanye from Boys to Men. Like, the joker could say, you know what I'm saying? So, but it was my high school. So, he introduced me to Cool in the Gang. My mom and my dad really weren't really crazy about the R&B thing. But they said, you know what? That's cool. I'm cool with the game. Like, let's try it. So we, we drove up to his house and I signed, got signed R&B. But I knew that R&B wasn't, it didn't really feel well. So when I got signed with Babyface and Andre Harrell, um, I would be in the studio with Babyface and he would say, it's something about your voice. And the conviction that I was prostituting God's gift mm. was really what was weighing heavy on me. So everywhere we went, because you know, you, you're raising the church, you know exactly what it is about your voice. It's not that you, you're so great, it's that God gave you this gift. So I was on a tour bus one night, to light on. still doing R&B, and um, I came off stage singing, and, and, and it felt like God had sat right next to me, and they were screaming my name, and he was like, do you hear them calling your name? And he was like, what did I tell you? You know, If, you, if I be lifted up mm -hmm. from the earth. Mm -hmm. So it was just conviction, man, you know what I'm saying? So I thank God for allowing me to do that, because a lot of people I know didn't get back. Mm -hmm. A lot of people weren't were able to do the, do the prodigal son go over there wow. and get back. Some of them go over there and get caught up, and it's, right. it's, it's a bad, it's a bad cycle. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I do this for ministry, man. I do this because um, I want to talk to our young brothers. Like, yo, there's nothing good over there. You right. Know you got a gift, and you know, I get it. Musicians got to get paid, but you, you can't be of the world. Right. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, and God said, I'll make room for your gifts. So that's really what it's really about: the transition from R&B to gospel for me. Awesome. We're going to be taking one on one's next story. And uh, we're just going to keep it moving. And up next, we have the lovely Erica Campbell. Woo! Luma, Luma. Positive. Come on, that's the new one. Yep. Positive. <laughs> Okay, yes. two quick questions for Erica. Who wants to start it off? Oh my goodness. Let me yes, see. Yes. Right here in the front. As a female, um, you and your sister came in and young girls were looking up to you all. And you guys kind of paved the way for us being able to express ourselves in ways that weren't previously accepted. How does that feel to have young girls looking up to you and saying, I feel more comfortable at church because 
Erica and Tina were able to show me a different way. So humbled and honored. Just, it is beyond me that, you know, a little girl from Inglewood, California can have that kind of impact when I meet people <laughs> and hear them give me that kind of testimony, or, you know, so what my music is for my career, or just me as an artist is meant to them, it's just absolutely amazing. And that's my job, right? I'm supposed to shine. Let your light so shine before men yeah. that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's actually the scripture base for God in me. You know, especially what you don't know is when I go home. Like, so they see me, but I hope you understand that I'm praying. I hope you understand that I'm mm-hmm. trusting yeah. God. Yeah. And so I hope you understand that I'm believing in God, believing in who he called me to be and not taking anything less than God's absolute best. So yeah. it's just it's amazing to find out that that's really happening, you know, with young girls yeah. across the world. Awesome. Right here, you in the black. Awesome. Hi, Jacqueline Sanders with Inspirational Sound. Yes. I know you grew up with a musical family. Yes. Can you tell me what it was like to grow up with all that music and all your sisters? Yeah. Tell me a little bit about growing up in your home. Um, let's see. There was music all the time. So whether it was gospel songs or us making up funny, silly songs, we made up songs about everything. If you follow my sister Tina, she has a birthday song that's usually just crazy and outlandish just because music is so life-giving. You know, there's so much joy. If you ever read the book of Psalms, those are all songs. And what I love about it is it is um, what my mom taught me. When, when I was a little girl, we would have to come around the bed and my dad would pray. And my dad would make me sing one of the songs that I would sing all the time was Ordinary People by Danny Bell. Mm-hmm. So I've loved music forever. My father was a big Winans fan. My mom a big Hawkins fan. So that was the music in my house, listening mm-hmm. to Daryl Coley, uh, Chariots mm-hmm. Coming, and, or even GMWA records. There was just so much music. My mom was over the choir. Before I was in the choir, she would help me. She would have me help her pick out parts. So on Saturday, before she went to rehearsal, she'd be like, what's the household part? And I would pick it out. Of course, shortly thereafter, she was like, a time to get in the choir. I was about 12 years old, and I didn't really want to, but I'm so grateful because I think I'm standing here today because my, my parents cultivated um, our gifts. My parents cultivated what we wanted to do um, and, and, and pushed us. Like, if I was singing and I wasn't moving, my mom would be in the back of the room going like this, like, can't nobody see nothing. Come out from behind the pool, bitch, move. Or she would do like this, walk. Or, you know, she would do those kinds of things to make sure that we That's were friends. So she, my mom used to sing. Um, uh uh-huh. Uh, walk around heaven. She said, if you sing and walk around heaven, you better walk around the stage. I'm like, mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> But I'm so grateful um, that she pushed me in that way. And so it's, it's a great part of my story, just my mom and dad pushing us. Beautiful. Right, we got to get Erica back to the theater. So. Oh. Yeah, I say Google. I say Okay, I'm right. trying to do Google. Okay, uh, I'm going to do somebody new uh, right here in the page. Uh, you are such an amazing woman who has accomplished a lot. Mm-hmm. And some of the things that you didn't prepare for, your success, your naturality, I know you still have dreams. And what are those dreams? If you don't mind sharing this mm-hmm. question. You know, it's so funny because I, I, I still feel new in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. I know that sounds crazy, but I still feel like there's so much to do. Mm-hmm. Spiritually, for sure, so yeah. much to do. Um, naturally, I I only know how to dream big. I haven't, mm. I haven't done a big enough tour by myself yet. I haven't done uh, the Kennedy Center yet. Mm. I haven't done Carnegie Hall yet. Well, let me change that. So a few years ago, um, I was standing in front of Carnegie Hall. I had a meeting with the new management team, and I was in front of the Camp Carnegie Hall, and I took a picture with the Carnegie Hall behind me. And underneath, I said, I'm going to sing here one day. Yeah. And then I put a bunch of other countries. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. No invitations. Ain't nobody called my number. And last year in the pandemic, beautiful, beautiful couple um, called and they do a Christmas event at Carnegie Hall wow. every wow. year. And she said, I actually saw your post. And I said, you know what? I actually like her and her music. And she asked me to be on it. So this year, wow. wow. Got to be faithful. She's amazing. And I'm so, so grateful. Congrats. Yes, thank you.